Let's see if we can get him this turn. Can you hear us, Steve? Sorry, guys. I had a bit of an audio issue on my end. Just needed a quick refresh. Thanks for having me, guys. Yes, sir. Awesome. Appreciate you coming aboard. Is it Bermel, right? Uh, Bermel. Rhymes with thermal. I knew it. <laughs> oh, oh, good. Right. I've been called worse. Don't worry. <laughs> right. You do Bennett's color commentary. Correct, correct me if I'm wrong. That is right. I uh, do radio and ESPN Plus calls uh, next to John Gertler, the great play-by-play -play, uh, gentleman cool. who uh, has taught me more than I could ever know. That's awesome. Well, we have our Buffalo Bandits colors on the graphics today because Bandits are incredible, the 12-1. and one. Um, What has it been like being around such an amazing team like Buffalo? What's interesting about the culture in Buffalo is there's an expectation to be great. They have been – Although they haven't won a championship in, what, 14 years, they're oh. always trying to be championship caliber, and they always seem to make a deep playoff run. And uh, so there's a culture around the team, an expectation to be great, to do a good job, to to do their job individually. But maybe when I, when I think about this, what's interesting is someone like Josh Byrne, he's hilarious, he's young, he's super athletic, super talented. Uh, but the amount of drive in his voice when he talks about the season – um, I won't forget that when the Bandits opened up 5-0, and I said, hey, I know you don't really want to look at the standings too much, but being 5-0 and is a great start, right? He's like, doesn't matter. Got to get to the playoffs first, and oh. that's what matters. Like, there is just this expectation of, of greatness. They are not satisfied because they're 12-1. and And I'll tell you that even if they lock up the number one seed in the NLL, there will not be a feeling of satisfaction in that locker room because they will not be satisfied until they lift the NLL Cup. It That's sounds incredible. to me like the uh, kind of like the avalanche of the uh, National Lacrosse League here at that point. You know, it's regular season accolades are all fine and dandy, but you want to get to the uh, the pinnacle and, and hoist the trophy here. But, uh, you know, <clears throat> like you said, it's it's it's, you know, continuous success. And it's, you know, you're always there. Like you said, the playoffs are just kind of a thing that's a formality at this point for Buffalo but what does Buffalo need to do in your mind, because you watch the games closer than almost anyone, uh, to make that next step and to not be that team? Yeah, but the playoffs, you know, are, aren't here yet. What does what does Buffalo need to do to become NLL champions this year? Well, uh, rumor has it that they were in the market for a big defender at the deadline, but they couldn't pry one away because, as always, uh, what can happen is teams, even with a losing record, still think they're in the playoff hunt. So they don't right. want to part with a, a big name defender in the chances that they can make the playoffs, especially with that wild card spot in the West. It's up for grabs. So uh, you, you talk about what's going to be the key. This offense is elite, absolutely unbelievable. There's seven, eight guys that can score the ball anytime it's in their stick. And I will say that the defense has been surprisingly good. That game against Philadelphia a few weeks ago, Philly controlled that first quarter. It was a two to one game. And Buffalo wore them down on both ends of the floor. You know, offensively, Buffalo started to figure it out. But ultimately, their defense did not give up a lick of space. And I'm impressed because when you think of some of the names on the defense, other than maybe Steve Priolo, it's a kind of a group of young guys that maybe are unproven, but there's a lot to be said for how much they're proving this year. So when you yes. talk about what the key is for them to – to continue, I'm not worried about this team's offense. This team, this team's offense will score 12 to 13 goals a game, even on the best teams in the league. It's if their defense can continue to play as well as they have. And if you watch the speed and the quickness of their switches and their slides, like the way that they're playing defense, it's all about how quickly you can roll off a pick or how quickly someone can step in in a slide and take away that space. And these young kids can fly. So it's going to be a matter of keeping that defense short up, keeping it tight playing responsible in their own end, staying out of the penalty box, of course, because teams on the power play are always going to be lethal. But when I think about what the key is, you've got Matt Vince, goaltending set. This offense is unbelievable. The defense just has to keep doing what it's been doing. Speaking of defense compared to offense, the Buffalo Bears have allowed 124 goals. That's good for seconds to the Toronto Rock. And by the way, the offense, 14 more than the Swarm, who have played one more game. I say it's pretty good on both sides. <laughs> um, yeah, for sure. And you look at the weekend that Matt Vince had, turned away oh, yeah. uh, 54 out of 65 on Saturday and followed up turning away 60 out of 71. So that's a big reason oh, why the Bandits yeah. are second in the league in goals against. Matt Vince is a beast. He set um, a career record. This late in his career, he sets a career record for most saves he's ever made in a game with 60. Oh, bunch wow. clap to Matt Vince. That's Absolutely, awesome. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> um, 
Let's get some thoughts on the PLL. And I know I've talked to a few guys and they're like, oh, screw that, Lee. But they have a deal with ESPN that, dare I say, is like way better than the NLL's deal. But how much do you think that means for the NLL going forward? Because I'll be honest, box lacrosse to me is way more fun than field lacrosse. And I grew up watching field lacrosse more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How big do you think the PLL deal is going to be and be on ABC? Well, I, I believe that the it was figured out just recently that the, the contract with the PLL does not limit players playing in the NLL. Ooh. So if the NLL season bleeds into June, they can absolutely join their PLL club after championship weekend. So that could be big for, I don't know, half the chaos roster if the bandits go all the way because, you know, they're the, the bandit chaos or the chaos bandits right now. Um, but uh, it, it does affect summer ball for sure, the OLA and MSL. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of times that there are guys that play summer ball up in Canada that are on the roster and then the NLL season starts and they lose their spot because mm-hmm. an NLL player comes in and takes it. So what this can do, I'm not trying to say it's all roses and, you know, through rose colored glasses, but it can allow some of these other guys to get some time to play box lacrosse in the summer if they're not replaced by, you know, some of the NLL players or that, you know, I, I don't know. It seems like the PLL and the NLL want to work together, which can be good. And I think the benefit is guys like Dane Smith, who are just superstars and Josh Byrne in the outdoor game through the PLL can maybe bring eyes onto the NLL because a lot of people that are field lacrosse fans don't know anything about the indoor game because it's kind of niche. It's hard to find. And if, mm-hmm. if you are, if you become a fan of Josh Byrne because of, you know, the player that he is for chaos, and then you have an ESPN plus subscription, you're watching the PLL games on ESPN and ESPN plus, and all of a sudden the NLL season starts and you know that Josh Byrne plays for the Buffalo bandits, you might tune in. Amen. That, he is the first, uh, you are the first to have positive reaction to this. So that's an awesome, uh, that's awesome <laughs> in itself. And not a lot of people we've discussed with or talked to about this has had positive. Like Mike said, they've kind of been like, ah, screw that league. But I want to switch gears and talk about you personally here yeah. and uh, your foray and what got Steve Burmel or Burmel into <laughs> into lacrosse. See now I've already I've already messed it up. But what got Steve at. Burmel into lacrosse and then subsequently into the job you have today, which is color commentary for the Buffalo Bandits. All right, I'll give you the Cliff Notes version because it's a long story. Uh, 1996, I was at the championship game. It was the last sporting event in the odd. The Bandits beat the Wings. Fans were ripping the cushions off of their seats to take them home because it was the last sporting event in the odd. There was like a Celine Dion concert after that at the uh, Memorial (laughs) Auditorium. But when the Bandits won it, it was such a celebration. Um, But I was only nine years old, and that kind of set me as a a Bandits fan for life. Uh, All the way up to 08, I I either was going to a lot of games or had season tickets. Had season tickets in 08. They won the championship. Well, 2009, I started to notice, you know, other coverage, and I found – uh, NLLinsider.com, which is Lacrosse Magazine's outlet to cover the indoor game. Now it's called IL Indoor, still the same affiliate, Lacrosse Magazine's indoor affiliate. And I reached out to the writer, it was Bob Chavez, who lived in Rochester. I said, hey, I'm a pretty good writer. I was a good student in school, you know. I'm a pretty good writer. I'm in Buffalo. I go to all the games in Rochester and Toronto. If you want someone to write that actually is at the games instead of you running from a satellite location in Rochester, I'm in. He goes, you got it. I can't pay you, but you can do it. Right. So for uh, five years, I wrote for Isle Indoor for free, just covering the team, kind of like a beat reporter. Uh, from there, the NLL hired me away, and they made me the beat reporter uh, for the NLL covering the Buffalo Bandits, and I got paid, which if I, if I can recommend, getting paid is better than not, just to be clear. Yes. Um, <laughs> so I, I wrote for them for uh, about four years as the official Bandits correspondent for NLL.com. But I always kind of made it known that I wanted to get into broadcasting. Um, I'd done some broadcasting around Buffalo for University of Buffalo men's ice hockey, for FC Buffalo Pro-Am soccer, uh, for the Buffalo Buttes. I did play-by-play for the women's hockey team. Uh, So I had experience doing broadcasting. And uh, thankfully, the Bandits, uh, there's there's another gentleman that does color with me, Randy Mearns, but he coaches St. Bonaventure men's lacrosse. And a lot of weekends, he's traveling with the team. So I have the privilege of filling in for him splitting the season with him and now i actually got hired by the bandits organization to be one of their broadcasters so uh, it was a 12 year 11 year journey but uh, i've been covering the team for 13 years 12 seasons because of the lost season to COVID. but um pretty neat that you know i start out as a, a freelance writer doing it for free and now you know being hired by an organization to be one of the broadcasters is an outstanding privilege so i love it 100 percent. that's pretty awesome absolutely 
people don't understand, like even as a person who wants to be paid for my own broadcasting stuff, it's such a gigantic cesspool. Like people just want to get into broadcasting, but That's you, you and other guys have met. Well, like it's, it's, it's a bunch of piranhas who really want to get paid. And you, <laughs> you and even other guys, I believe Andy Lindahl told us, just be in the right place, keep working hard. Yeah, put the, your head and down then and somebody's going. going to notice you. Yeah, and that's the hope. I mean, uh, it's it's been – you talk about paying dues. You know, for, for years it was – it paid – I'm not complaining. It was awesome working right. around the team. But for years it was making nothing. And then when the league – when I was hired, it was like $25 a story. So it wasn't like I was putting a roof over my head with the money, cool, you know, or, by any stretch. So it's certainly about paying dues. It's a tough industry. And one of the things that I say is like in, in a league like the NHL, there's – 32 broadcasters and there's a hundred thousand people that want that job. So it's, yes, it's, it's, it, it, there's not a lot of availability. You know, it's, it, it's not like you're working in PR or something where there's a team of a dozen people that work around the team. There is one play by play guy or, or girl, one color commentator, one person between the benches. It's not, it's a flooded market. You know, there's, there's not as much demand supply as there is demand for jobs like that. Flooded market sounds better than piranhas and cesspool. I'll give you that. It's all right. It's a a flood. It's a market that's flooded, and the piranhas are in the cesspool that flooded it. There you go. Look at that's a color commentator right there, able able to take what you said and 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 dress it up just beautifully. Uh, Let's get to the team here, Uh, the Buffalo Bandits. We talked about Dane Smith and how much he's a stud, but you know, you know, you want to look and you want to prop up these other guys on the team. You talked about the defense and all the young guys, but. Who are the, some of the other guys, in case Dane Smith has an off night, who's some of the other guys on this team that can and will step up in his place? I feel like it's worth noting that Dane Smith is, knock on wood, going to break the scoring record. And if you look mm-hmm. at who he's chasing, it's himself. He's chasing his own record, which is just absurd. <laughs> That's like, I, I understand that there's two extra games now, but, you know, he set that record with the two extra games. Like, he's going to beat his own record, which is crazy. Um, he's also on pace to break the all-time assist record for a season, too. So, yeah, I see like um, 65. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Um, but the other guys that you mentioned, um, that he, he's kind of working closely with the Hilka Nantico, who, as a rookie, is the rookie goal scoring leader right now. And this kid's ability to put his head down and get to the front of the net. There's a goal that I think of in particular where he backed down the the high defender with the ball in his stick. Right, he's ragging the ball, backs him down, and he backs him down so far he ends up backing him into the crease man. So now he has two defenders behind him. He kicks the ball in front of him to Dane Smith, and the guy in the middle has to come over the top to try to get to Dane. And as soon as that happens, Dane goes across crease to Connor Fields, who's wide open for a quick stick, because Dehoka was able to literally force two defenders down to the crease, and then a third guy had to come over the top. So his strength and his athleticism is unbelievable on the right side. And then you got guys like Kyle Buchanan, who are just loose ball vacuums. He uh, So many times on a faceoff, if Max Adler gets the ball loose, Kyle Buchanan hustles over, scoops a loose ball. On the left side, you got the big gun and Josh Byrne, outstanding player, of course. Kluche, written off by the Philadelphia Wings, traded to Buffalo, a second overall pick. They trade him halfway through his rookie season. He He's number five on the list of guys that can score the ball, and he is deadly and lethal. So uh, it sounds like I'm being incredibly biased, but if you look at the numbers, it backs <laughs> me up. It has nothing to do with mm-hmm. me working for the Bandits organization. This offense has eight players that can score at any given time. And that's what makes them so dangerous this year, and a large part of why they're twelve and one. Twenty-seven yeah. goals for that rookie. What's his name again? Dehoka Nantico. Played at Albany. Yeah, that's that an awesome name. It's an awesome name. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm looking at just these guys. The shooting percentages are off the charts as well for these guys. And you're right. I mean, we talked about 179 goals through uh, what would we say 13 games. It's just that's like one less than the moment. <laughs> absolutely, inc- absolutely incredible. With a game in hand, yeah. Right. That's true. Um, final thing I'll say before we let you go here humbly. The Bandits play the Wings tonight. I've already seen the preview tweet for it. It's game day for Buffalo. And they also have to play the Mammoth on Saturday. Expectations for this weekend, sir? Uh, it, this is a crazy week for them. Four games in eight days. You know, they Ooh. talked a lot about conditioning. The guys love the, the cryo treatments, the cryotherapy, you know, after the games, in between the games. So after the game Saturday, the guys got on a bus to Toronto to fly commercial to Halifax, and most of the guys made a stop at Buffalo Cryo to get a cryotherapy treatment before they boarded the plane. So they're trying to take care of their bodies for sure. Um, You would think that someone like Matt Vince might take a game off, but this guy doesn't even take a rep off in practice. Um, He wants to face every shot all the time. 
So I bet that Vince will play every game this regular season just because he refuses to sit. Uh, I don't see them taking their foot off the gas. I don't see them resting players, especially not this weekend. Um, but the reality is they can lock up the number one seed in the whole lead, league uh, by Saturday, which is absurd. Um, and that mm. could change things. Um, they, they should be all right. I mean, it's, I think the toughest game for them is going to be Colorado flying Agreed. out after being on the East Coast, being in the altitude. That was one of the things that Coach Tavares has talked about, that it's different playing out there even without all the travel. So I definitely have Saturday circled as a game that if they win, I'll be utterly impressed. And if they lose, you can't say, man, what are you guys doing? That's four games in eight days, including travel. So this is a great team. We'll see what they're made of. With uh, So far, they've, they've been up to the task every time. That's awesome. That's right. And, and Colorado definitely is uh, a team in need of a win as well. So uh, Bandits color commentator Steve Bermel, we appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to come aboard the AM drive here. And we'd love to have you back in the future. And again, Anytime. we we uh, we uh, go Bandits, I guess. We're, we're rush guys, but they're not in the playoffs right now. So we, we have to look for <laughs> other teams. <laughs> We uh we we cut our teeth on the rush, but the bandits they're exciting to pl uh, to watch play, and uh, I don't know they may take uh, some fandom on the AM drive here. Plenty of room on the bandwagon, boys. Amen. Appreciate Thank you so much again, Steve Bermel, color commentator for the bandits. We will see you next Thanks, time. Guys. Peace.